How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. AW Revolution fall out last week. We were about to go on the air when the show was happening about the start we were we were wrapping up as the show was about to start and i want to just touch on some of the key points there man what a great show what a great pay-per-view quite possibly arguably one of the best that AEW's done maybe the best that AEW's done we'll talk about that i'm a little biased i was at all i was at all out 2021 so i still consider that the best we also have the new elite okada is all elite debuted on dynamite was on collision last night in a really fascinating squash match <laughs> where his tag partners didn't even tag in. We'll talk about that. Also, Netflix is going to test their capabilities ahead of Monday Night Raw going there with a mega fight. Mike Tyson at 57 years old against Jake Paul in July, Arlington, Texas, Cowboy Stadium. We're in a whole new world. Where you could put on a match like that, you could put do a stadium show like that, not use traditional means, be an exclusive to a streaming service. Very cool stuff. This and a whole lot more. Obviously, collision results, dynamite, SmackDown, The Rock, everything else that's going on in the world of professional wrestling. Also, I want to hear from you. Tweet me at Andrew Zarian on X. I gotta get used to saying that. It's no more Twitter, it's X. A lot to get into here on Sports Byline Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I don't know where to begin today because a lot happened this week. Uh, that pay-per-view last Sunday. Fantastic. What a great show. Really, I mean, it was a back-to-basics for AEW with their show. But, I mean, the big story was you had all these great matches, and that, and that arena was packed. 16,000-plus in there. Really impressive. Uh, majority of it, obviously, was to see Sting's last match. I think it delivered more than, more than people thought it would. But the bigger story with Sting is the run that he had in AEW that was flawless. They did as close to perfect as you could for someone's send-off. You know, this is a guy... Came out in the 80s, had such an important run in WCW, never really did anything in WWE until the very end. We never got to see this guy uh, tested in that company. Number of reasons. One, he was very committed to WCW, WCW to goes under. He didn't care for the storylines. Uh, very uh, different mindset at that time for him. Goes to TNA, has, I mean, really becomes a flagship of that company. For a long time, all over that TV, he is one of the few stars, mega stars from that era, that was pretty much consistently on television. You know, Hogan left for a while. Flair left for a while. There was really nobody left from that era that was consistently, I mean, I'm not saying every week, but consistently on TV. Uh, MG, who else could you think of from that time frame? Uh, really, no one. Uh, you know, I get Flair is, you know, but not really. You know, Flair went yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, he's he's by far one of my. I mean, we've talked about this before, and I think I mentioned it last week to you. This was a guy I grew up with, and the guy I remember the most, and yeah. I was so happy to see how they did that. And I told you last week that I don't want him to go out on his back. I don't think that's the right call, and they did right by that. They they did it the right way and i think it's a good precursor to how other guys are going to go out in the future yeah you know well i mean mm -hmm. you know what what it is saying i was speaking to somebody midweek i had dinner with them and he's on the tv side of things right on um, not not in wrestling but he said listen this just shows you the power of cable television and the importance of it in the 80s and 90s how people became mega tv stars because of this and the internet's doing the same thing and guess what the paul brothers are a great example of that, whether you like them or not. They became megastars because of an alternate media platform. 
And these were the guys for wrestling. I mean, that's why wrestling is still so dominant on cable. AEW and, and uh, uh, WWE, obviously. Okay, it's a big deal. But we, we got a big send-off for Sting, which was fantastic. We got probably a match of the year contender with Takeshita and Will Ospreay, which I loved. Love that match. We got a killer match with Danielson and uh, Eddie Kingston. You know, for, for the entirety of that match, I really wanted Kingston to lose. I wanted Danielson with the title, but now things are making a little bit more sense. Sometimes you wait, and the story tells itself. What was your favorite match, MG, from that show before I move on to SmackDown? Because I have a lot of AEW to talk about. Uh, it was a Sting match. I, I thought they did that right. It really was. Mm. So, that was, that uh, was it for you. you. Know, yeah, that that one was that one topped it. I mean, I was in tears for the last half of that match, uh, but I thought it was good. I thought the um, Takeshka or, uh, and uh, Will Osprey match was by far bell to bell uh, the best match. But just yeah. from an emotional standpoint, the Sting match did it for me. Yeah, mm. yeah, and uh, they're they're on a roll here. Dynamite. The big story obviously was Okada debuting. In AEW, he made his decision. There's a there's a number floating on the internet. I I haven't been able to confirm this. I don't I don't salary stuff is not my thing. Dave is better at that. Sean Ross Sapp is better at that. The estimated number is about four million a year for Okada. That's tremendous. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money, and I hope it encourages them to use that as a motivator. To, to keep him on the top and do something interesting with him. He doesn't just become another star, which I don't see happening in that company. Already he's positioned to be bigger than life. I hope not. I hope it doesn't happen. We'll see. I want to talk about Dynamite and Collision in the next segment, obviously, because there's a lot to talk about there with the Fallout. But, you know, a lot of changes happening. SmackDown, first time ever. There was an in-ring sponsorship dead center in the ring. And it was that stupid prime bottle. <laughs> I have no problem with I don't. I don't care. I don't drink those things. I find them gross. But you could have done it a little bit better instead of a stupid bottle. People are complaining, apparently, because it was too slippery. The partnership starts. Uh, they're gonna, this is going to continue. This is going to be a deal. The partnership starts at WrestleMania. The Prime logo will be center of the ring for premium live events. They are catering to a younger demo here. For the first time in many years for this company. And that is a lifeline. That is growth. That changes your whole trajectory. Uh, their audience is getting younger again. For the first time in very long. Those 55 pluses are, are disappearing. And guess what? Guess why? One of the key things that's going to change in their entire demo is this Netflix deal. My father watches Monday Night Raw every single week. Do you know why? He knows what channel it's on, and he presses that button, and he goes there. You know, Netflix, a little intimidating. You got to go to your Fire TV or your Roku or whatever you're on. You got to click the app. You got to log in. You got to scroll. You got to find. It, it, I'm telling you, for many people, not all, this is a little bit more of a task. It's another step, and they're just going to forget about it. You know what? They're going to put on USA. What's going to be on USA at that time? A Law & Order SVU marathon is going to be on, and guess what? You're watching Mariska Hargitay instead of Cody. <laughs> That's what I, I'm telling you. I, it, this is going to be a very different type of show. It should be presented differently. It should go differently. But we'll see what happens. We got till January there. SmackDown, though, opened up with that. Big story here. We, we also had Randy Orton, Kevin Owens defeating Austin Theory, Grayson Waller. Bobby Lashley defeated Karrion Cross in the DQ, so that's continuing. Logan Paul opened the show, like I said. But the big story here was Cody and Seth answering the Bloodlines challenge. Bloodline comes out. The Rock comes out. Cody and Seth come out through the crowd in a shield way. Maybe they're the men of the people. Maybe that's what it was. 
I did the... think that was interesting. What did I you think? You think it was like an homage to Shield because they've aligned? I think it was a. I, I think it was like a, a simple callback. Hey, remember when we used to do this? Yeah. Something like that. It was they didn't mention it, so I don't know if it was just irony or what. Mm. Well, it ended with Cody slapping the rock. Might have been cut off depending on what market you were in, because they because they went a little long there. Rock was a little long winded. And this set up Ro- Cody and Seth versus Rock and Roman for for WrestleMania night one. But Interestingly enough, they have set this up that Rock, Dwayne's going to possibly have multiple matches. Cody is set up. Seth is now set up because he turned around to Seth. He's like, he's like, if you keep going at it, I'm going to get rid of that stupid belt of yours. I own this place. I'm, I'm on the board of directors. I'm, I, you know, he's an owner. That's the story that they're telling. Mr. Mayavia. <laughs> he's doing the Mr. Mayavia. Uh, I, you know, it's all fun stuff, man. That that's that stuff is so awesome for crossover. Is it going to be a five star classic? No. Is it going to be a great match? I'm sure. But what will happen with the Rock after this? Rock Roman, obviously. Cody Rock for the title. If Cody beats Roman, you also have Seth and Ro- and and I mean, you could do a lot of things here. If he's healthy and he's staying for two years, he's not going anywhere. We'll see what happens. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Also, WWE Hall of Fame. They've announced some names here. Paul Heyman to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Bull Nakano. The U.S. Express, which is Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham. Interesting pick because they were only together for two years, and I'm curious why they they they're inducting. I guess I guess they're it's another ring for them, right? IRS is in the Hall of Fame. Barry I believe Windham's. one of them is. Yeah, is Barry um, Windham in it? You can look uh, that up. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, he. Oh, you know what? He might be with the Four Horsemen. I can't remember. If I don't know if it was that, his version. But yeah, but yeah, you know that this is a good pick for the Hall of Fame. Bolden Connor, obviously. Very well deserved to be in a wrestling Hall of Fame in the WWE Hall of Fame, even though she didn't, she wasn't. Actually, she was very instrumental. She was their their attempt at redoing the women's division. Bull Nakano and Medusa. Heyman, yeah, obviously, she had a lot of matches reasons. with Medusa. Yeah, many, mm-hmm. and they had many matches in Japan. Uh, Paul Heyman, very, uh, you know, he's turned this down before, but this is Hunter's first Hall of Fame. Running it, and they're in Philly. You can tell the difference. You can tell the difference so? in the influence of Triple H on this, yes, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. think you're going to start seeing some of those guys that Vince didn't like that deserved it, but, you know, like Demolition, for example. I could see them going in eventually, and people like that, Yeah, you know. <clears throat> yeah, oh, it's all very interesting stuff. I, I, um, I'm looking forward to what they do. Moving forward, everything is changing. So, like, all these things that we have been able to do and predict with this company is kind of going out the window. It's a very different WWE and overall presentation. It's a much better WWE. Let me just say that. Much better WWE. I know some of this is optics and illusion because somebody is gone, so we think it's way better. I mean, you know, they still have those stupid lines. They did it on on Raw. What did he call him? Doo-doo Dwayne? Seth called. Yeah, that was a little. Dude, you know, that's a suffering sucker's stash. Stuff, diarrhea. And that's gonna, diarrhea yeah. Dwayne. Yeah, diarrhea Dwayne. Mm. You know, that's going to take a while. When you are constantly fed that pill to think a certain way and to speak a certain way, you can't just get rid of that unless you start from scratch. We've made great progress. We're going to have those still. We'll see what happens. You want to talk about collision? You want to talk about dynamite? What do you want to talk about? Let's talk about collision. Well, we'll, we'll talk about dynamite a little bit. I don't have my notes in front of me for dynamite results, but we got a fantastic main event that didn't do great in ratings. Uh, this show was down as far as an overall rating goes. Uh, you could you could come up with every excuse in the book as to why. I don't know why. I I thought it was a fantastic pay per view and it should have been a much better show. And it wasn't. I mean, the show was great. The, the viewership wasn't. 
Uh, that's it. That's the thing that they're going to face. That's a problem. They're the gonna, presentation they're gonna have. is different. The presentation that was my biggest was takeaway is what, it was dynamite? a reset, right? Well, yeah, dynamite, it, it is their back to tell. basics. The tunnel's back. They got a new yep. set, mm -hmm. all new logos, all new graphics. Everything is new. Uh, Swerve, obviously, is the focal point here with Samoa Joe and, um, and Hangman Page for the world title. They are setting this up for whoever wins. You also set up, uh, you know, some sort of... You know, I, I thought it was interesting that the Kingdom came out, right? Undisputed Kingdom came out. Matt Taven and Mike Bennett are the tag champions for Ring of Honor, and they got killed by Joe and Swerve. Yeah, this whole that was segment was very... Segment. It really was, but I'm not saying it in a bad way, but you could see how it was positioned. It was different. They're trying something here. You, so you had Samoa Joe and Swerve with Prince Nana defeating Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. You had Hook defeat Brian Cage for the FTW title. Jericho will come out and help Hook. So now you have created a tag team between Hook and Jericho. They're going to be in action next week at Big Business. Killswitch defeated Matt Menard after Daniel Garcia tried to make the save. Copeland came in, cut him off. Uh, this has been very, you know, I guess because the two shows were were taped back to back, you know, in the same same uh, market. Uh, two days two days away. Yeah. Um, they, a lot of these guys were accessible, so they used all of them for collisions. I'm curious if that does anything to the numbers for collision from last night. Uh, Bucks came out, Okada's there, huge star. He's a heel. First time in his career, right? No, he started as a heel in Japan. It's, he was, a that's yeah. how he got his start. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying as far as, um, as and, far and as who US. Okada is. Yeah. yeah. As far as the Okada yeah, that cool. we know. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, he, this is something different for him. He's going to have to change a little bit of his style to more of an American style. We saw him in that squash match last night, which we'll talk about. I am very excited to have him there, and I hope he's a nice little shot in the arm here. The quality of the wrestling is going to be unbelievable. It's just sustaining a live audience in a building and on TV. That's the goal here. So the EVPs came out, they announced. Uh, so now also they announced that they suspended Hangman Page and they kicked Kenny Omega out of the Elite for not making his dates. Fantastic stuff. Eddie Kingston makes his way to the ring. Guess what? You, yeah. Now you got a bunch of new matches for Okada in a different position. In a whole different he's, position, you know, yeah. He's working a new, a new dynamic. He's a heel now. And all these matches that he had in Japan are going to be presented differently. So you can run them all back and we can get awesome matches. Yeah, and and I got to tell you, I I'm really I'm kind of excited. I'm actually really excited for Eddie Kingston and Okada being that match at oh, that pay per view. It's gonna be good. Dynasty. That's gonna be so good. Uh, Okada has to win. You know, he has to win this. My um, did my mic just go? Do you guys hear that? Or is that my hearing that's going? Okay, thank you. Thank you. My, uh, I think it's my hearing that's going. I'm losing my mind here. I was at the circus today. I'm all dizzy from it. I took the kids to the circus at UBS. My head is spinning. Coin drop, obviously. Okada makes his way after Kingston confronts him. Uh, he attacks Kingston, and he's officially the elite. We got Darby and Switchblade facing off for big business, which is another great match. Main event, Kyle Fletcher, Will Ospreay. This was their best, I would say, one of their best TV matches. The overall was a nice touch, and it made the ending mean more. Uh, and Danielson came out, and the show ended. Great. Great stuff. Rampage, you got Orange Cassidy, Trent Beretta, defeating Kip Sabian and Butcher. Julie Hart defeated Robin Renegade. Penta. Defeated Action Andretti. Top Flight defeated Commander and Brian Keith in a three-way match, which also included Private Party. Listen, solid dynamite. Numbers weren't great, but solid, solid dynamite. And this is the path that they need to go on. Next week, they got a huge show. Humongous show next week for big business. Samoa Joe against Wardlow. Fine, you know what? 
World title match. Why not put world title matches on TV? Switchblade Jay White versus Darby Allen, another fantastic match. Willow Nightingale, Riho, and debut of Mercedes Monet. So we think. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm That's the rumor you, in the air. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, if she does not show up, I am eating my shoe. <laughs> I will eat my shoe live on the air. I'm waiting. I'm wondering if all those detractors are going to come out of the woodworks and apologize. No, they're going to go away. They're going to just cower in, in their bedrooms. <laughs> no way, she's going. You're making it up. Why would I do that? I don't care enough to make things up. I really don't. I have, I have zero effort in me to sit there and plot and, and put internet lies out there. I say what I'm told. Most of the time, 99% of the time it happens. Once in a while, things change. I wonder if Raw is going to be TV 14 on Netflix. Very curious about that now. Aren't you? Uh, yeah, uh, we talked about this on the podcast a little bit about yeah how raw how raw might look. Um, and I looked at and we talked about this before, but I looked at uh, that tennis match they had this last weekend on uh, Netflix yeah. and just looked at the clarity, the clarity of which is being presented. And now you don't have to dumb it down to put it on broadcast television. It yeah. looked sharp. And I'm just wondering if that's going to affect the wrestling. You know, itself. you brought that up when How we were doing Matt present Man. moves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we were doing Matt Man, you brought that up and you said uh, uh, that tennis match was in 4K. Right? Yeah. Okay. It looks sharp. It looks it very looked sharp. Really mm -hmm. sharp. Yeah. Of course, uh, over traditional cable. Raw, I, a SmackDown, people don't realize it is broadcasting at 720p on linear television. I don't know what they do on their, on their app. If that's 1080 or 720, I, I can't remember. But there's going to be there's going to be a tremendous quality change when they go to um, when they go to uh, Netflix for Raw. I, I'm curious if that's part of it. If they if they up the resolution, a lot of people nobody's talking about that. I'm very curious. I, I'm going to ask if this means that they're going to 4K. Uh, I I'm, I imagine they would make it into a big deal like they did when they went to HD. There's a lot of other things that go into effect, like. I don't know, the spray tans that they put on. Do you remember that first show? Shawn Michaels came out looking ridiculous with his spray tan because they tried to do his makeup in yeah. HD. And he looked ridiculous. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. I I, I don't know, uh, I, but I could definitely get an answer. That's something that hasn't really come up, but the, the quality difference, it's another thing, you know, to kind of use as a marketing tool. When we come back, we're going to go into Collision, the setup for Dynasty and Big Business next week. All this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Collision last night. This was taped. Um, this was taped, today, I think, Thursday, right? Is that when they taped it? Yeah. I believe so. I could be wrong. Yeah, it was the day after. It was okay, the next you. day. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at my wrong notes for the, for the show. Show open up. Brian Danielson, Shane Taylor. You know, this was a good match. This was a really good match. But you know my problem was? Shane Taylor's gear. I brought this up once before. He needs different gear. That's not working for him, that piece. That's a... I don't like that outfit on him. He's a big dude. Make him look menacing. I don't like the leotard shorts. Taylor got the early offensive. Daniel evaded a, a cannonball, hit a trio of head kicks. Then he hit the knee for the win. Will Ospreay came out to confront Danielson and challenge him at AW Dynasty. He came out. It was an interesting promo. He came out, grabbed the mic. He goes, I need another one. I have a couple questions to ask. He goes, it looks like you got something to say to me. And it was a very cordial interaction. I got to like say, uh, Osprey is connecting with the crowd in a very personable way. You can just tell he loves this. And he's very, he's very easy to 
get along with. And I think I think he's going to be going forward one of the biggest baby faces in the company. Man, you know, they need it. Mm. They need it. So I, I I'm looking forward to that. That that's a very big positive here. They a hundred percent need it. They need a baby face there. Will Osprey came out. He did this thing. Very cool. The Elite defeated oh, Adrian, so Alanis, John Cruz, and Liam Gray in a total squash. And it was, it's wild. Like, you see Okada, and I, he is, this, people don't realize how big this guy is. And he is monstrous next to these three, you know, dwarfed preliminary. Them. Dwarfed them. And he was stiff. He wrestled like Okada. He hit a couple uh, uh, forearms to the to the to the head and to the to the neck. He did the rainmaker one two three one. That was it. The elite didn't even get a tag. Uh, uh, the Matt and Nick they didn't even get a tag into the match. Okada just came in, squashed, and left. I think that was the point, right? And we talked last night. We were talking in our little chat we do uh, about the art of a um, squash match. Yeah, and this was. This was textbook of how you use them and how you get people over that people might not know a lot about. This was great. This was fantastic. This was great. Um, I, I do think they need to start educating people on Okada. Obviously, right. the I assumption think that is the... that everybody knows who he is. This, they have to right. educate the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I bring my father up. I bring him up. He watches wrestling. Loves wrestling. Doesn't necessarily watch New Japan. I mean, if I told him Okada's the guy, he's like, oh, yeah, I know, I know who that name is. He doesn't really know. Why don't you educate us? Tell people who he is. Tell them why he's so dominant. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did do a good job. They, they, they spoke about IWGP champion, how dominant he was in Japan. That is how you build somebody. So yep. after, Eddie and Kingston tried to attack. And, Real quick, this yeah. is what I think they, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but this is what I think they should do with Mercedes as well. Give her a bunch of squash matches right off the get go too. Yeah, to I think really. I, yeah, introduce you gotta people. Show dom you got to so, show same how thing. dominant they are. Uh, after mm -hmm. the match, Eddie Kingston tried to attack uh, them. He got beat down until Penta came out and tried to make the save. And Pack returned. He was shredded. He was oh. gone for seven months. Can you believe that? Yeah, it seems like he just. It, when he comes back, it's very impactful, and then he's, and then he's gone, and then he's gone. <laughs> you know, I. He comes out, makes a save. Kingston challenges them to a trios match at Big Business next week. So you have the elite Okada and the Jacksons. Are they the Jacksons now? They have to be, right? They're, they're the Jacksons. They're still going by the Young Bucks, but hey, I mean. Michael, <laughs> Tito. They're, they're all part of it. Matthew, Nicholas. Uh, <laughs> they should just change it. You know what? Kazuchika J Jackson? He could, oh. That's all they do. They become the Jacksons. No, yeah, yeah, no. great. He grows the mustache, too. Oh, man. Can't wait. Can't wait for Okada with, a, with that mustache and a goatee. Evil Okada. <laughs> Mariah May defeated Trish Adora. After the match, Timeless Tony Storm came out to present, uh, uh, present the first annual Tony Awards. But it's Tony with an I, so they don't get sued. She awarded That's it to so Mariah good. May for her performance of Revolution as Tony Storm. It's <laughs> so like so corny. It's great. So corny. <laughs> and uh, Tony Storm's delivery of this character. It's so nuanced. She's found something, and it's just working. And I know a lot of people don't like it, and people. And I love the character. I, I, find I it love the character. I don't. The match qualities are suffering, but I love the character. Right. I think. You know? Yeah. So I, I don't point. know. I don't know what wh which way to go. Uh, Diana Peraza came out uh, to jump them, but they would get the the upper hand. Left Diana limping on the ramp. Nick Wayne, with the Patriarchy, defeated Adam Priest. After the match, the Patriarchy were talking trash. Uh, ringside with a fan. Uh, 
that was in a mask. It turned out to be Adam Copeland, who took the TNT title and went to the ring. But he picked up a case that was under there, and it was a case with spikes. The word spike spike written on it. Written on it. (laughs) But we never saw what was inside of it. It just said spike. Okay. That was setting up that match for Toronto. You know what? That is how you do it. That's a great build. You want to sell more tickets to Toronto, you start building it now. What, in like in a week? Mm -hmm. Two weeks, you know, you give them a two-week build. They they can sell some more tickets. Yeah. 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 (sighs) Let's see. Where were we? Spike. Okay. Chris Jericho defeated Teton. Teton looked good. Did you see that in the opener? uh, A lot of people were freaking out over this because I got a lot of messages. They... The the opener had, I believe it was Teton and Cody in the opening intro video. Really? From Ring of Honor in at the Hammerstein. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so everyone's like, what the hell was that? Well, what they do, they put on, they, they, they show who's on the show. So they had to get footage of Teton that they had, and they happen to have this. Ah, okay. I think he was doing like a flying crossbody onto Cody. I I think that's what it was. A lot of people messaged me and I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? That there was a ring of honor. I'm like, I I don't think it means means anything. (laughs) I actually reached out. I'm like, hey, what does it mean? And they're like, it means nothing. (laughs) Just the video. It should be noted too that Chris Jericho was Lionheart. Chris Jericho. He was Lionheart. Yeah, whenever he's wrestling the CML guys. All right, Teton looked good. Mystico defeated Angelico. We're Sir Pentago on the outside. And you got the Atlanta Street fight. There was no, this was not a Freebirds match. The House of Black defeated Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, and Mark Briscoe. It was a wild match. It was everything AEW does with these street fights, except there was a flaming table. Yes, there was. There was a flaming table, and there was uh, Julia Hart misting Karen Jarrett, which yep. I thought very entertaining. <laughs> it was, it was as bizarre of a match as you'll get. <laughs> it was. Weird, I mean, but, but this, good at all but the crazy time. thing here is, the assumption is that, and the rumor is that this is leading to some sort of fire match. Yeah, they've been setting it up. Dave on Observer I don't know how Radio I feel said this is like fire. some sort of Inferno match that they're setting up. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett in an Inferno match? Yes, I'm here for it. <laughs> and it does seem like, that does feel like something he would do. It's something he would want to do. It just, it falls into that category. And it's so not part of the rest of the AEW story. It's kind of out on its own lane. Yeah. So... I'm fine with it as a one-off. I don't know when they'll do it, but. I don't know e- either. Uh, maybe at the pay-per-view. Maybe they yeah. do it in Toronto. Maybe yeah, they Dynasty. do it in the pay-per-view. Dynasty, yeah. That pay-per-view is looking to be really strong. Uh, the ticket sales currently, okay, they have moved 3,800 tickets, distributed 3,800 in tickets. This is as of a couple days ago, two days ago. The last time they were here was Collision. Last year. And they did 3,100 tickets. 120, 2024. Actually, no, this is this year. Does that make sense? First count. Am I wrong? Mm. I don't know. No, no, no. Sorry. (laughs) I am wrong. I am wrong. I am wrong. I'm wrong. AW Dynasty. My apologies. 3,800 tickets. Current setup is 5,100. There's about 1,300 tickets available. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, how they'll do. This is obviously not the best market for them. Going based on the past shows. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. They were there in January. They were there 120, 2024. The collision did 3,100 tic- uh, seats. I don't remember what show that was. But they got to really sell that pay-per-view. 5,000 is very low for that for them to do a pay-per-view, huh? We still have time. They're going to yeah. open up more seats, but I don't know if this is looking to be a 10,000-person pay-per-view. This, this is also a fairly new market for them, uh, the St. Louis market. They haven't ran that as much. They ran it a couple times, I know, but 
it's a newer market, so maybe maybe they'll get tickets late as the card builds out. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens there. I, I don't know. They've also announced a tag team tournament to begin on Collision next week. This is for the vacated AW World Tag Team Championship that Darby and Sting uh, l- released. The Sting retired, and Darby's climbing mountains. I heard he's going to the moon <laughs> next. Becoming an astronaut. <laughs> he's going to Mars. On, on this week's collision, they mentioned that the brackets would be revealed soon. This is obviously a March Madness thing, too. The tag tournament. They had planned to do a bracket March Madness type tournament for the tag titles after this. I don't know who should get it. The Bucks. I mean, the Bucks would be a great contender to it. FTR would be a great contender to it. House of Black. Acclaim could be back into it. Blackpool Combat Club would be my... Blackpool Combat my Club would be great also to get those titles. Their tag division is is really solid. Really, really solid. I, I You know, their emphasis changes from time to time. Sometimes there's more focus on it. I think the big focus is going to be that Continental Championship. When we come back, we got a few more things to touch on. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. I brought up before we went to break the Continental Crown, that championship. You know, Eddie has really been a great champion for that. And I, and I touched on Danielson. I really wanted Danielson to win it if it made sense. And I guess it didn't make sense if Okada's winning it. And that kind of says. Uh, the question is put out there that is this a secondary belt for them? If Okada is their champion, is that triple crown champion? Is that their second world title? Did you just elevate it to that? Does it mean more? Of course it means a lot if Okada holds that title because he's not a guy that loses. He wins that belt. He could could challenge it whenever. He, He could have all these great contenderships for it. And finally, when you beat him, it's very much elevated. And it keeps him out of the, 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 that top-tier picture because you're, you're going to ask, why isn't Okada going to challenge for the title within the next two months or three months? This is a way to keep him out of it. Man, I want to see him and Adam Copeland. I don't know why. Him and Christian, I want to see. Okada's going to have all these unbelievable match opportunities, and I really hope they go through with it. Uh, and it seems like they, they've changed their stance on waiting to do these matches because we're seeing Osprey and, and Danielson already. We're seeing Kingston and Okada already for a title. You know, you got to make it must-see TV, and this is their attempt. Back to basics. Make the matches mean something. Said that for a long time. When you don't make the matches mean anything and you don't announce it, it's going to be difficult. And you know what? They've pivoted. Guys, next week, we'll be back with a whole lot more professional wrestling to talk about. Appreciate you guys tuning in every single week. And we'll be back next week. Bye-bye for now.